or torn by strife and violence, that God, you would help us. Lord, that you would quell the violence, Lord, that you, would, Lord, would stop it, Lord. Oh, God, we can't hire enough police. We can't pass enough laws, Lord, for the lawless. But, God, you're able to do it, Lord. So we call on your name, Lord, to help us, Lord, for, for peace and safety in our homes and in our communities. We ask this according to your word that we might live quiet and peaceful lives, Lord. We pray, Lord, for those in authority that, God, you might touch their hearts and touch their minds, Lord, that their decisions, Lord, would glorify you. Lord, we pray that you would bless everyone in this place and everyone who is on their way, that God, we would come to this place, Lord, and that we would find it as a refuge and as a shelter and as a sanctuary from those things that are outside. But then, Lord, help us and bless us as we leave this place to be your witnesses, Lord, to be your ambassadors to this, uh, to this world. World, Lord, to this uh, world that is turned upside down, Lord, that we would be your witnesses, that we would tell uh, men and women about the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, and that you're able, Lord, to make men's lives better, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've already done. We thank you for saving us. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us. We thank you, Lord, for delivering us. We thank you, Lord, for touching our bodies. We thank you, Lord, for turning our lives completely around. Lord and lives that would glorify you Lord and Lord and, and 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 lives that would exalt your great name Lord so have your way Lord save in this place today and deliver in this place today and strengthen in this place today God have your way in our lives for all that you do Lord we already give you the praise we already give you the glory we already give you the honor we ask it all in Jesus name Amen. Come on, let's, let's give God praise on this Father's Day, on this Juneteenth. Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, that's nice and polite. Come on, let's give God praise. Let's lift him in this place today. Hallelujah. 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 Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. And we come to celebrate the father of all fathers, the one who sent his only begotten son to save a wretch like us. He's a good, good, good father. And there is nobody like him. Who came to celebrate the father of all fathers? Who came to lift him up and worship him on today? Hallelujah. There is nobody like him. He's a father to the fatherless. He's a friend to the friendless. He's a mother to the motherless. There is nobody like him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
give God praise. Amen. For his goodness, for his goodness, for his kindness. Amen. For all that he's done, that, that's the least we can do, is to give him praise, to glorify his name and to exalt him for all that he's done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. chapter number 5 from Mark chapter number 5 and verse number 23 says and besought him greatly saying my little daughter lieth at the point of death I pray thee come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live let's pray our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, this time in your house to worship you and praise you. Thank you, Lord, for this time to hear your word proclaimed. And now, Lord, help us and strengthen us by the power of your preached word in this place today. And we thank you, Lord, because it's the entrance of your word that gives light. So today, Lord, we pray for light. We pray for illumination from your word today uh, that as we leave this place that we'll be better and stronger uh, because we heard and received your word today bless us all together save and deliver and heal and do what is needed in the life of every hearer uh, in Jesus name amen amen praise God thank you Lord portion of verse number 23 says my little daughter lieth at the point of death I pray thee come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live today I want to preach from this subject fathers who make a difference fathers who make a difference as always, whether it's Father's Day, Mother's Day, Children's Day, or whatever special day it is, the, the message is not just to fathers. There is some principles and truths for fathers, mothers, children, and everybody in the text today. So today, uh, from these verses, I uh, want to preach from that topic, fathers who make a difference. Because mothers, mothers will always be applauded for their sacrifice and for their labor, for their work. Uh, we usually don't have a hard time uh, giving our mothers 
uh, the praise that they are due, and they have, uh, without a doubt, earned it. Uh, yet the impact of fathers can't be overlooked as well. Uh, studies show uh, that the impact of fathers is vital to the well-being of the home. Uh, National Fatherhood in Initiative completed a study that found that where fathers are present in the home, children are less likely to exhibit and develop antisocial behavior. They're less likely to experience depression. Children are less likely to commit suicide. They are less likely to use tobacco, alcohol, and illegal drugs. Where fathers are in the home, Children are less likely to participate in other risky sexual behavior. They're less likely to experience infant mortality, live in poverty, be the object of abuse, and experience learning disabilities. Just because of the presence of a father, children are less likely to exhibit these kinds of behavior. Ideally, fathers are to function as the thermostat in the household. We, we ought to help to control the climate, the temperature, the environment in the home. Amen. Where, where we're present, we ought to help to, to, to make sure that the environment is conducive to everybody's well-being. Now, if the presence of a father in the home makes a difference for the family, then the presence of a Christian father ought to make an even greater difference in the home. We are, we are fathers to be difference makers. We, we, ought to, we, we ought to make a difference. I don't know if it happened in your home, but, but, but sometimes in my, our home, when my mother didn't feel like dealing with us, she would say, wait till your father gets home. And instantly things changed. We, we, we can't afford to be ignorant of, of, of Satan's devices. The, scripture tells us Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he comes to do it in our lives personally as well as in our families. And our world really needs fathers to make a difference in this world in which we live right now for the good of our children, for the good of our wives, for the good of our neighborhoods, our society, and the world, we need fathers who are difference makers. You don't have to have a title to be a difference maker. You don't have to have a certain level of education to be a difference maker. You don't have to make a certain amount of money to be a difference maker. You just have to be present in your home to make a difference. In our text, the, the, the father's name is Jairus. His name, Jairus, means to be a light, to give light, or to shine. And that's significant because a father's presence should be as distinct as light and salt. We, as Christian fathers, we are the light of the world. We're the salt of the earth. We ought to make a difference wherever we are. And our text helps to show differences that a father ought to make in the home. In verses 21 through 24 uh, says that, that there comes a ruler of the synagogue. His name is Jairus. He's the father. And when he, when he saw him, uh, he fell at his feet. Talking about Jesus. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. Besought him greatly, saying, My daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. He's got faith to believe that if Jesus comes to his house, there's going to be a difference made. And Jesus went with him, and much more people followed him and thronged him. The, the, the first point I want to make is that fathers who make a difference seek Jesus. They seek Jesus. Earlier in Mark chapter number five, the, the, the news has spread that, that Jesus cast demons out of the man that was in the cemetery. The only thing that we know him as is legion. He says, because these demons in me are many. And Jesus left the area after healing him. 
He left the area by boat, but there was a crowd of people that, that, that met him when he got to his destination on the other side. And in the crowd was this man named Jairus, who was a ruler in the synagogue. He's a big shot. He's known. He's important in the community. But Jairus looked for Jesus to make a difference in his family. He, he knew that the problem was too big for him. His daughter was not just sick. She was at the point of death. And so Jairus seeks Jesus because of a desperate situation in his home. And his daughter was, was grievously sick, sick until the point of death. And fathers, all of us have to realize there are many things in our, in our homes, in our families that, that are too big for us to handle. And I think there's something in most men that we figure we can get a, a wrench or a hammer or a nail or something and fix it. If it ain't working right, we, we can at least get a hammer and bang on it. But, but everything in our home can't be fixed with a hammer and a wrench. And fathers got to realize there, there are many things that we just cannot do. That, that, that we have limitations and that's why we have to seek Jesus. John 15 and 5 says, without me, you can do nothing. That, that scripture is for everybody. No matter who you are, no matter what your, your level of success is, no matter how much, uh, how much uh, money you have, no matter how great your connections are, without the Lord, we can do nothing. And so Jairus seeks Jesus himself. He doesn't leave it to someone else. He doesn't say, go ask your mother. He doesn't wait for somebody else to do it. He goes and seeks Jesus for himself. And a father who's going to make a difference will seek Jesus himself and for the good of his home. He won't leave it to his wife. He won't leave it to grandma. He won't leave it to big mama. He won't leave it to the preacher or the deacon or the church. There are some things that a father needs to do for himself. I know that's true. A amen goes right there. And sometimes as men, we want to leave spiritual matters to others. We want mama to pray with them. We want mother to read uh, Christian uh, stories to them. We want mothers to give them spiritual direction. But at some point, fathers, we got to realize if we're going to make a difference in the household, we need to be able to teach them something. Yeah, yeah. We need to know enough about the Bible to say something to them. Yeah. It's not all on us, but we can't give up and abdicate our responsibility for spiritual direction in the household to anybody and everybody else. Right. We, can't, we can't tell our children always, ask the preacher. The scripture tells us to seek ye the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. That is for everybody. That's for the father that we need to seek the Lord for ourselves. We need to get direction from the Lord for ourselves, and then we can give direction for the rest of our household. And so J.R. seeks Jesus and he just doesn't seek Jesus. He seeks Jesus fervently. He doesn't seek him half-heartedly. And even though Jairus is a ruler, this is something that usually doesn't happen, I, I'm sure. When he sees Jesus, he falls down at Jesus' feet, and Scripture says he besought him greatly. And fathers should, should seek Jesus fervently. Deuteronomy 4 and 29 tells us, You shall find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all of your soul. And we ought to put the same or even more emphasis on seeking Jesus as we seek other things. J. Iris wants Jesus to come to his house, lay his hands on his daughter so that she will live. And he's not afraid to come to Je for, for Jesus even to come to his house. That, 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 is, that is how desperate the situation is. He doesn't want to put it off. He doesn't want Jesus to just point his hand that way and, and pray. He wants Jesus to come to his house personally. And I wonder how many of us, our home is in such a condition that we will welcome Jesus in our house. Or would we have to go home before him and do some cleaning up and straightening up and hiding things under the sofa and, and put it in the back of the refrigerator and, and, and put some things away and, and, you know, and sort of tidy up things? 
but 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 our homes ought to be in such a way we ought to dictate uh, the, the temperature the climate the environment of our home so that our homes are in such a way that we could invite Jesus to our home yeah. if he would come yeah. there in person and I know some of us are glad he don't show up in person. But, but the fact of the matter is that he sees everything, that he beholds the evil and the good. So it don't matter how far back you put it in the closet, he can see it in the closet. He can see under the sofa, in the back of the refrigerator, in the back room, in the attic, in the basement, and everywhere else. J. Iris wants Jesus to come to his home. And Jesus does go home with him. And the fact of the matter is that, that all of us need to know our significance and our importance to the Lord. That the Lord would come wherever we are. I don't know if any of us have such connections that we would expect that the president would show up at our home. Or even the mayor for that matter. But don't you know that the Lord will show up at your house? That he'll show up in your life? That he'll be with you? That he, his promise is that he won't leave us or forsake us? That he goes with us wherever we go as his people? That we have a constant companion in him. That, that, that he doesn't send us to work all alone and tell us he'll see us when we get back home. He goes with us wherever we are. Aren't you glad that, that, that sometimes we go a different route and then we hear later on that there was a wreck over there. But simply because he was with us, we went a different direction. We went another way. Aren't you glad that we, that, that we went a little earlier and we avoided the mishaps of life? Aren't you glad that we decided that, that, that we're going to, to check the door a, another, another time to make sure it's locked? And then you hear about these crazy people who come busting in people's homes simply because he's with us. But a father who makes a difference, first of all, he seeks Jesus. Secondly of all, a father who makes a difference will stay with Jesus. But verses 25 through, through, uh, through 34, we didn't read them, uh, but, but an interruption happens on the way to Jairus' house. And a woman with an issue of blood comes along and she touches Jesus' garment. You know the story. And she is immediately healed. Jesus says, who, who touched me? She finally speaks up and says, I'm, I'm the one who touched you. Immediately after these 12 years uh, of this issue of blood, her issue is dried up immediately. All, all, the, all this time, if, if, it's, if, it's, if it's me, I'm thinking, "Come, well, you know, you holding things up, woman. I, I got to get Jesus to my house. I, I got a situation, a problem there, but, but he doesn't run off. He stays there with Jesus. And once Jesus decides that he's going home with Jairus, th this happens, but Jairus stays right there with Jesus. Jesus' and Jesus interaction with, with this woman didn't cause, uh, didn't cause him to, to run off. He, he is delayed, but, but he's not denied. Right. And Jairus stayed with Jesus despite this delay. Uh, b because delays are, are not denials. And, and, and while we look at things by the, the time on our watch, uh, that, that, that God doesn't need a, a, a watch. God doesn't need a timer. Right. He knows what time it is already. Yes. And, and while we may be fretting because of the time, we need not fret when the Lord is with us. Uh, because of delays, because of post postponements, because of disappointments. Uh, God knows what's happening where we are, and he knows what's happening where we're going. Yes, yes. And so it is, uh, by, by staying with Jesus, J. Iris got a chance uh, not just to, to, to see anything, but he got a chance to see uh, this woman that was healed by Jesus' touch. Yes. Uh, that that I, I believe that ought to have encouraged him that that while Jesus is on his way to his house, 
that, that, that uh, Jesus would stop and touch this woman and, and she was healed. And that would encourage him to know that when Jesus got to his house, he's the same Jesus that, that touched this woman with the issue of blood. He's the same Jesus that can touch his daughter as well. Amen. So it is that Jesus, that, that, that now Jairus waited his turn. He didn't run ahead of Jesus. And fathers have to learn to follow Jesus yeah, yeah. even when we have to wait. Right. Everybody say wait. wait. And I don't know anybody that, that would raise their hands and say, I just love to wait. <laughs> we, I, I think we always look for the shortest line when we go to the grocery store. And invariably, there, there, there's a problem up ahead. I got in the shortest line, and there's somebody up ahead that's got a problem. They got to go check the price of some object that's way back in the back. And then I see the other lines that were long, and they're moving along. And I want to go over there, but I don't want to lose my place here. And I go to the car wash. I, I'm trying to get in the shortest line. And it looks like these people with the express wash, they keep coming around and passing me by. I, I don't want to go anywhere and wait. I, I, that's why they have express cleaners, express alterations, and express everything. Because people don't like to wait. But invariably, even when we choose the express, somehow it always ends up that we got to wait. But we have to follow him and we have to wait our turn. Jairus stayed with Jesus even when, when, when he received the news that his daughter died. In the, in the scripture, verse number 35, when he, it says, when, when he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, that daughter is dead. Uh -huh. And here we are dealing with this woman with this issue of blood. Uh -huh. yeah. And my daughter has died. Mm -hmm. He said, so, so why trouble, trouble you, the master, any further? And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. He stayed with Jesus. He had a purpose for staying with Jesus. And, and, and Jesus is, is encouraging him that it's all going to work out. But so Jairus stayed with Jesus even when he received the, the news that his daughter da died. And now this seems like a hopeless situation. And it appears that Jesus is, is too late. But the messenger said, why, why are you gonna, still going to trouble him? And Jesus encourages him uh, that he should only believe. But a father who makes a difference will stay with Jesus when others quit. At the time of disappointment, when it looks like everything is going wrong, that, that we will stay with Jesus. We won't look for an alternative. Where well, Jesus is taking too long, I, I, can't, I can't continue to wait here. I, I've got to seek another alternative. Yes. Waiting can increase our strength. And, 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 and I know it, it, it usually doesn't uh, rub us the right way, uh, but, but waiting does something for us if we will wait patiently. It helps us. It's like medicine. It don't go down, taste good going down, but it'll help us in the end. And that's why Isaiah, when he writes, he says, but they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. There is, there is strength to be had if we wait on the Lord. So, so not only, not only do, we, do we seek him, we need to stay with Jesus because if we'll wait, if we'll follow, there'll be strength for us in the end. Everything doesn't come instantly. He, we, we can't treat Jesus like, you know, the, the slot machine to pull the handle and then the riches come down. I, I know you may have great faith, but you, there, there's going to come some time when you're still going to have to wait on him. You're still going to have to stop. You're still going to have to follow. You're still going to have to wait until the difference comes. Fathers, we, we have to ask ourselves, do we stay with Jesus through the delays? All right. All right. Do we get the hammer out to try to fix it ourselves? Do we wait on him? Do, do we get impatient? Do, do we quit? Or do we say, I knew it wasn't going to happen anyway. 
Do we shut down? Do we look for alternatives? We try to find somebody else. We, we, we look for some other medicine. You know they on television, 1-800-so-and-so-and-so-and-so. It'll do anything you want to do. It'll fix you. It'll fix your car. It'll fix the washing machine. But we got to learn how, how to stay with Jesus no matter what happens. Fathers who make a difference stay with Jesus. And so it is. Uh, we, we have to stay with him. We have to seek him. Then look at verse number 36. Jesus tells him, uh, don't be afraid, only believe. And it says, and he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, and the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue. Finally, he gets there, sees the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. All the mourners are there because his daughters died. And when he was come in, he saith, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, okay, he's thinning the crowd out some more. He only brings with him Peter, James, and John. When he gets there, you know, they're weeping and wailing. And when he says she's only asleep, they laugh him to scorn. He puts them out too. He's thinning out the crowd. He takes the father and mother of the damsel and them that were with him, Peter, James, and John, enters in where the damsel was lying. Thirdly, we have to believe Jesus. Fathers who make a difference believe Jesus. So, so here it is. Uh, Jesus tells him, only believe. The text of the, of the, of the word there, believe, it is, is indicative of the fact that we have to not just believe at this point, but we have to keep on believing. And a father who makes a difference must believe Jesus even when the situation goes from bad to worse. And how many of us have ever been in a situation that went from bad to worse? But Jairus believed Jesus at the beginning. And when, when he first asked him, he said, come, lay your hands on my daughter that she may be healed and that she shall live. And he has not changed at this point. He's still believing Jesus. And, and you and I have to keep on believing Jesus when the situation goes from bad to worse, when it do, does not look like it's getting better, when it, we see with our own eyes it's only getting worse. Faith requires that we trust the Lord no matter what the circumstances are that we encounter. It's faith that pleases God. He tells us in Hebrews chapter number six, but without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. And we have to believe him and know that it's only faith that pleases God. Jesus only takes Peter, James, and John with him to the ruler's house. And we, as fathers, we, 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 got, we have to, to, to heed this, this, uh, this truth, this fact, this principle, that, that, that fathers have to surround them, themselves with people of like faith. All right. Everybody can't go with you. Everybody's not going to do you good. You know, and, and they can be your friend. And you can go see them. You don't have to cut them off. But they just can't go everywhere with you. That's right. That's right. They're not going to always do you good. And so sometimes you've got to thin the crowd out like Jesus did. It is here that Jesus encounters this group of mourners who are weeping and wailing when he comes to Jairus' house. And no doubt there were probably some of those people in the crowd who were professional mourners. That when somebody died, that, that, that people thought the, that, that the, uh, the, the more weeping and, and, and wailing they did, the greater the, their love for this person. The truth of the matter is that some people that, that did the weeping and the wailing didn't even know the person who died. But that was just how they, that's, that's just how they responded to, to death. The truth of the matter is there's some people who respond to death that way right now. Who is it that died? It's my friend's friend. I didn't know him. But we all tore up about somebody we didn't know. 
I'm moving on. But here. But, but to, to, to them, Jesus says, the, the daughter is not dead. She's just asleep. And, and, and here's their response to Jesus. They, they laugh him to scorn. But Jairus ha still has to believe Jesus, despite these critics, despite all this show of emotion, and a father who makes a difference has to believe Jesus in spite of everything that's going on around him. Th th this is a whole lot. First I hear that she's dead. We get there. Here's the weeping and the wailing. Here's, here are these people. And when Jesus finally speaks up and says, she's not dead, she's just asleep. Then here comes the laughing. The, here are the critics. And, and, and Jairus has to stick with Jesus. He's got to believe Jesus through all of this. And sometimes the, the emotions, the critics, the words that are spoken, we have to, we have to believe Jesus no matter what's going on through all the chaos through all the things that are happening we still got to believe Jesus and you may be the only believer in your house but 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 somebody's got to stand up and believe Jesus for the home father must believe God when when he's hurt when, when he's grieving when he's disappointed when he's wounded when he's discouraged when he's misunderstood, when he's criticized. And if men and fathers, if we're gonna lead our home, we gotta be determined to lead our home in faith, no matter how we're feeling. Men, if we're gonna lead our homes in faith, <laughs> in spiritual matter, we, got, we gotta lead our homes no matter how we're feeling. And, and, and the truth of the matter is, we're not always feeling that great. Sometimes you don't feel like being bothered. And sometimes that's why you say, go ask your mother, because you don't feel like being bothered. You done had a rough day. Some, we, we, we're not always feeling like the, man, like the spiritual uh, giant in the home. But, but we have to put our feelings aside. We have to put our emotions aside if, we, if we're going to lead. And, and, and it, it does, it's going to require the support of the mother, or the wife in the home sometime to help. But, but somebody needs to be out front leading and we can't always put it on the wife and put it on the mother to lead. I'm moving on. But, but the people did, didn't understand Jesus when he spoke of the daughter being asleep. But, but, but don't you remember even when, when Lazarus died? His own disciples didn't, didn't understand when he was saying that, that he's not dead, he's just sleeping. His disciples said, well, if he's sleeping, he's doing well. And then Jesus said, well, no, he's dead. <laughs> Fathers who make a difference believe Jesus. Fathers, if we're going to make a dif difference, we've got to seek Jesus. We've got to stay with Jesus. We got to believe Jesus. Look, look at verses 41 through 43. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kumai, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of 12 years. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it and command it that something should be given her to eat. Isn't that amazing? Fathers, fathers who, make a, who make a difference, finally celebrate Jesus. The, the, the daughter's raised from the dead. Doesn't say he put oil on her. Doesn't say he prayed a long prayer. He just says, damsel, arise. Just simple, just plain. Didn't go through a, a bunch of changes. But, but, but here it is that, that, that when Jesus does this, the, the Father is a part of those who do celebrate Jesus. Now, now Jesus, we have to note that Jesus tells the people here, don't tell other folks what happened. All right, all right. And, and, and some, some people say, 
uh, he said, don't tell anybody because opposition to, to Jesus had already started, had already, was increasing, and raising a dead person w would, would uh, tend to bring, terminate, bring to an end his ministry too soon. When, when he raised Lazarus, uh, they were out to, to kill Lazarus all over again. <laughs> you know, I already died once. But, but people did not want to see uh, the, the ministry, the work of the Son of God, Jesus, grow, increase, and gain followers. But I'll tell you, once the community that's already started mourning got the word that she died, once they see that she's alive, they'll know what happened. When, when, when Matthew writes, Matthew and, and Luke both write about this, this same account, um, Matthew said, and the fame hereof went abroad into all the land. He's saying that everybody heard about Jairus' daughter. Now, you and I have not been commanded to be silent about what God's done for us. Psalm 105 and 1 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. And fathers who make a difference celebrate Jesus. When Mark writes about Jairus' daughter being raised from the dead, here's how he says it. Uh, uh, Mark chapter 5 and verse 42 in the message uh, translation says, They, of course, were all beside themselves with joy. Here uh, in King James Version. He, they were astonished with a great astonishment. Even the father joined in the celebration of what Jesus had done. And, and men, uh, it, 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 is, it is not being uh, more feminine to celebrate and praise Jesus. Uh, th th there, has to, th there has to be at some time we set aside our cool. We set aside our, our dignity, as we think, and, and give God the praise that he deserves. I know everybody don't do it the same way. Everybody's not the same, but, but everybody ought to do something. There, there ought to be. Now, now, if I go to your house and I see you watching the game and, and you throwing the popcorn all over the place and spilling Kool-Aid, I, I expect th to know that there is some, some emotional output in your body. And, and that when you get to the house of the Lord, you, you won't sit there like a bump on a lawn. Or when, or when God does something in your home, in your own home, you can, you can praise God in your own home, in your own yard, you know, on the job, just go in the restroom or whatever. Find a place to give him the praise that he deserves. Don't, don't you remember during Jesus' triumphal entry that the rulers asked him, make your followers be quiet. But Jesus responded, if these hold their peace, then the very rocks will cry out. The fact is that the Lord wants people to praise him. It is, I, I said this the other week, that our praise is part of our witness. It is, it's how people know which side, whose side we're on. When we praise God, they know whose side we're on. They know who we we believe in they know who we trust in so we ought to give God the praise we ought to celebrate him a father who makes a difference celebrates Jesus he celebrates Jesus more than he celebrates his wife celebrates Jesus more than he celebrates his children we ought to celebrate Jesus more than we celebrate our home and our car. We ought to celebrate him more than we celebrate our bank account our job our connections our hobbies our position or anything else, we ought to celebrate him more than we celebrate those things. And those things, nothing wrong with those things in and of themselves, but we ought to celebrate Jesus more than we celebrate anything or anybody else. He deserves the praise, all the glory, all the honor for what he's done and what, for what he keeps on doing in our life. 
So when Jairus came home, the atmosphere changed. I, I told you earlier that his name meant light or to shine. And, and he came home and he brought Jesus with him. And that's how we'll change. How, that's how we'll be the difference makers when we bring Jesus home with us. And the way he's coming home with us, he's coming by his spirit in us. We're not dragging somebody through the door with us. He comes home with us. And that, that when we trust Jesus, he comes home, makes his abode in us by the Spirit of God, and he makes a difference wherever we go. And so it doesn't matter what's going on in the home. doesn't matter what's, wh how people are feeling at the house. doesn't matter what's going on in the neighborhood or in the community. We can make a difference, and we need to be his difference makers in the the world today we, we, we've got to bring him home with us and if fathers make a difference in our families what it's going to do is going to make a difference in the neighborhood yeah. Yeah. there needs to be a house in the neighborhood where, where people know them, them people they go to church and they trust God and they believe God and the, and the matter of fact is uh, probably most people in the neighborhood they know you go to church now, they may not know that you trust God, but they know that you, you go to church. Everybody knows those cars that pull out on the Sunday. They, they, they know, if, especially if, if you still carry a Bible and they see you with a Bible in your hand. And if you still dress up to go to church sometime, they really know it. It, 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 it's, it's become so different now to dress up and I ain't, I ain't, I ain't banging on clothes or nothing but I'm just saying uh, it, it's so rare to see people dress up now you don't have to dress up to go to work uh, teachers don't have to dress up to be a teacher in the school you, you, you know very rarely do you see people dressed up at all uh, but, but if we dress up to go to the house of the Lord folks know it they, they know you pulling out to go to church uh, they they looking out the window even if you don't see them they see you they, they know what's happening in the neighborhood and so if, if we change our homes that means there's going to be a change in the neighborhood if there's a change in the neighborhood that means there's going to be a change in our cities if there's a change in our cities that means there's going to be a change in the state and if we change our state that means there's going to be a change in our nation and, and like no other time uh, before I believe our nation our states our cities our communities our neighborhoods and our homes need to change and men fathers we can be the difference makers in our home and in this nation if we'll just seek him and stay with him and believe him celebrate him it'll make a difference all around us uh, we, we, can, we can change our nations and our homes from despair to hope and from weakness to strength and from confusion to calm, from down to lifted, from worldly to godly, if we'll just lift Jesus up. Isn't that what the song says? Lift him up, lift him up till he springs from eternity. And if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. That's what he wants to do in your life and in my life. He just needs to, some men, especially men, especially some fathers, to stand up and say, I'll be a difference maker. I'll seek you. I'll stay with you. I'll believe you all the way. No matter what's happening around me, I'm going to trust you, Lord. I'm going to trust you to make a difference in my life and in the life of my family. Come on, give God praise. Give him thanks. Let me, let me just make this final appeal because I think what we've gone through in the last couple of years is, is not, this ain't, this ain't the end of the story. This ain't where things fall off. I, I believe there's going to be some other things that are going to happen in, in, in our cities, our states, nationally, and even internationally that, that we're going to have to deal with. And, and it's going to take some men. It's going to take some real men. I'm not discounting women, but y'all can't do it alone. And neither can we do it alone. But we can't, we can't send the sisters out front all the time. Y'all go ahead. The, the, yeah, you, you, need some, you need some hard heads and some hard ankles. 
the, the, the Lord needs some, the, the, the Lord needs some stubborn men yeah. to do his will Amen. I know y'all think we stubborn you know but, but God put some stubbornness in men for a reason so we won't be easily moved when it is something we believe in. All right, all right. So if we, if we were stubborn out there, we'd be stubborn for the Lord. Man, you ought to write that one down. Yeah. I, I believe it. I, I, I really believe it. And, and, I, and, I, and that's why I'm glad to see men come to church. I'm, that's why I'm glad to see men come to the Lord. That's why I'm glad to see, see men praise the Lord. That's why I'm glad to see men who really believe God. Because it's going to take that. It's going to take that. I don't care what else you got going for you. If you ain't got the Lord going for you, you're still missing the big, the big piece. You can have all the connections all around the city. But without me, that's what Jesus said, but without me, you can do nothing. They, they can list all your accolades and all your accomplishments. You tell what a wonderful guy you are. But, but we need the Lord on our side to make a difference. And, and I really believe that, that, that it is that is one of uh, the missing components in many situations that, that we fail to take our rightful place in the home. And, and I know everybody doesn't always, everybody's not always going to agree. Father told, Father told us some time ago, sometimes you got to be the bad guy. You know, wife don't don't understand, children don't get it, you know. Dog may run away when you come home, but 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 when it comes to the things of God, that, that's where we need to be dogmatic, that's where we have to be a fanatic. That we would trust him no matter what. Won't you trust him today? Won't you trust him today to make the difference? What, what a difference happened in Jairus' life from the time he asked Jesus, come home with me, to the time he got the news, your daughter's already dead. Don't trouble Jesus anymore. And Jesus said, don't be afraid, only believe. And he went home, and Jesus just tells his daughter, who's been laying there dead, damsel, arise. Takes her hand and lifts her up, and then tell them, get her something to eat. This ain't even finished yet. Get her something to eat so she'll continue to live. And some of us got some dead things at our house. Some of us got some sick things in our house. But I come to tell you today, he can fix all of it. The stuff that the hammer and the wrench and the nail won't fix, he can fix it. Because he can fix our hearts. Won't you stand to your feet? I don't know who you are, where you are. But today, we extend this invitation, and it's not just for men, not just for fathers, it's for everybody. That, that when we come to the Lord, that we would, we would be the difference makers in our home. We would be the difference makers in our in our communities. And today that, that invitation is, is extended for those who have not received Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, that today you would make that decision to say, yes, Lord, I'll trust you. 
and I'll, I'll trust your shed blood to be the payment for my sins. I want to be a part of the family of God. I want to be born of your spirit. Make me one of your difference makers. So if that's you today, today you want to be saved, won't you indicate so by raising your hand wherever you are? If you've broken your covenant with the Lord, you once walked with the Lord, and today you want to come home, you want to return to the Lord, won't you raise your hand today to say, that's me? If you need special prayer, whether you're a father, whether you're a man, no matter who you are, if you need special prayer today, a situation in your life, won't you raise your hand so we pray together today? Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, today, Lord, we thank you for the privilege of hearing and receiving your word. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being in your house and gathered together with your people. And, and yet, we still have needs and we still have concerns for ourselves personally, for family, or for friends. And our, our prayer is that, God, you would intervene, Lord, that you make a difference, Lord, that you would help us that you would raise up, that God, you would touch, that God, you'd make it better, that you'd fix it, Lord, that you would turn it around. Because God, we do need you. We know we need you. We can't do it by ourselves, Lord. With you, all things are possible. And so we believe you today, Lord, to do those things that are possible in our life. Bless us, Lord and then make us a blessing in our homes and in our communities. And God, we give you thanks already, and we give you praise already. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. We thank you, Lord, because we trust you, Lord, to do what no other power can do. Have your way and bless us, and we will give you praise, for we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. sanctuary and those who have joined us virtually. Um, uh, let's thank God uh, for those who have joined us virtually as we sign off today. Thank God for them joining us virtually. Praise God. Uh, thank God.